Chapter 1, The Therapist's Cheat Sheet When you first start out, you may be tempted to buy just about every oil you can get your hands on. Considering that there are hundreds to choose from, this is going to be counterproductive. In this chapter, we will go through what you should look for in an oil, and also my top 10 favorite oils to help narrow down the field a bit. Liking the smell is important. It does not matter how beneficial the oil is if you cannot stand the smell. You will end up wasting money on a bottle of essential oil that you seldom, if ever, use. When I first started experimenting with aromatherapy, I bought patchouli oil, despite not liking the smell. I only ever opened the bottle once. An oil that you love the smell of, on the other hand, is something you will use often, and one that will have an uplifting effect on your emotions every time you use it. When you find an oil that you like, look for others within that same family of scents. For example, lime oil is a citrus oil. There's a good chance that you will enjoy other oils within the same family. The Real Never-Ending Story Start off by getting two or three different oils at first. You will be amazed at how long one bottle will last you. Because you use only a few drops at a time, it is better to stick to some tried and tested favorites initially. When you have practiced with using the oils a bit, you can add to your collection. The Top 10 Most Useful Oils These are the oils that are most generally useful. I always have these oils in my aromatherapy kit. Lavender, eucalyptus, and chamomile oils are the ones that I would start with. I have not included tea tree oil in this list because I really do not like the smell. If you find that you can handle the smell, it can be a useful oil to have on hand as well. Lavender. This one should be at the top of the shopping list. If you get nothing else, get lavender oil. This oil can be blended with nearly every other oil, and it smells great. It is also the most versatile when it comes to uses and is one of the few oils that can be applied neat to the skin. It is safe to use on children from the ages of 10 weeks and up, and also safe to use on cats, dogs, and horses. If you have small children or if you like working with your hands, make sure that you have lavender oil around. To make it go a little further, mix it with equal parts of grapeseed oil and keep it in your first aid kit. This mixture will help to disinfect and treat minor cuts and scrapes, scratches, insect bites, rashes, bruises, burns, and grazes. The mixture can help soothe the itch of chicken pox and reduce the risk of scarring. It can be applied neat as is or mixed with equal parts of tea tree oil directly to a fungal infection such as ringworm or athlete's foot in order to kill it off. You can apply it mixed into some full cream milk directly to sunburnt skin or simply add a few drops to the bath to help reduce the sting of the burn and to promote healing. Add a few drops into a tablespoon of apple cider vinegar and rub into the scalp as an effective treatment for lice. It will soothe the discomfort of most wounds and burns and help to reduce the inflammation and itch that comes with an allergic reaction. It is very strongly antibacterial, antiviral, and antifungal. It is one of the best skin rejuvenators, and this makes it extremely useful when it comes to reducing the appearance of scarring. Put a few drops into a diffuser to help reduce congestion and fight colds and flu. If the chest is very tight, mix five drops of lavender oil and three drops of eucalyptus oil into a tablespoon of a carrier oil and apply it to the chest and back. Lavender is one of the best oils to use when you're feeling anxious or are unable to sleep. Diffuse a few drops into your bedroom for about half an hour before bedtime to promote a restful sleep. Alternatively, massage a drop of the oil into each temple or place a few drops on your pillow. Lavender oil is very effective when it comes to soothing headaches and migraines. Again, massaging a drop of the oil into each temple is helpful. When I get a migraine, I make a cool compress using a bowl of water into which I've mixed five drops of lavender oil and five drops of chamomile oil. I soak a washcloth in this mixture, wring it out, and place it on the back of my neck. I make a second compress in the same manner to put over my forehead and temples and then lie down for a bit. I rub a couple drops of lavender oil into my stomach area to help combat nausea associated with a migraine. 
Lavender and eucalyptus oil make a potent blend that eases sore and stiff muscles. Put three drops of each into very warm bath water about an hour before bedtime to help relax the muscles and help you sleep better. Alternatively, you can mix five drops of lavender oil and three drops of eucalyptus oil into a couple of tablespoonful of carrier oil and use as a muscle rub. When it comes to your pets, lavender oil can be used in their rinse water after they have bathed to help fight ticks and fleas. You can also apply two drops to the base of the tail and two drops to the back of the neck to help repel ticks and fleas. For a reasonably priced carpet treatment, mix a few drops of lavender oil into a cup of baking soda and sprinkle on your carpets. Leave for a few hours, preferably overnight, before vacuuming it up again. You would think that lavender oil being so useful would cost an arm and a leg. Fortunately, it is quite reasonably priced. When blending, use it as a middle note. It smells herbal. Eucalyptus oil. If you are a very active person, this is one oil you should always have on hand. Eucalyptus is one of the most effective oils when it comes to easing sore and stiff muscles. Add a few drops to your bath water when you're feeling sore. If you want to boost the effectiveness, also add a cup of Epsom salts to the bath water. Alternatively, you can blend it with a carrier oil and massage it into sore muscles. This oil should never be applied to the skin neat as it can burn the skin. Always use at a maximum dilution of 1% to 2% to the carrier oil. It is also a potent antibacterial and antiviral agent that is a great decongestant. If you have a tendency to pick up all sorts of bugs, this is a good oil to have on hand. If someone in my family picks up a cold or flu, we diffuse eucalyptus oil to help kill off any bugs in the air and prevent everyone else from catching the bug. If you're battling with a blocked nose, Diffuse the oil, and it will quickly clear up congestion. Alternatively, you can drop a few drops into a basin of steaming water and place a towel over your head to catch the steam. Take a few deep breaths to reduce the congestion and fight the infection. The oil can also be helpful added to the bath water for this or mixed in with a carrier oil. If you have a very bad cold or flu, mix five drops of lavender oil five drops of eucalyptus oil into two tablespoonfuls of carrier oil. Apply to the chest, back, and the soles of the feet just before going to bed. This helps to draw away the infection and will have you feeling a lot better in the morning. If you have a high fever, make a cool compress with five drops each of lavender and eucalyptus oil in a bowl of cool water. Eucalyptus can be helpful when it comes to treating skin infections as long as it is properly diluted. For an effective treatment for cellulite, blend five drops of eucalyptus oil and five drops of juniper oil into a handful of damp, used coffee grounds. Mix into a paste by adding some water and massage into the area. Leave it in place for about five to 10 minutes and rinse off with warm water. Blast the area with cold water after this for an added boost. Used in a diffuser, Eucalyptus oil can help keep insects at bay, perfect for those warm summer nights that you want to spend out of doors. Eucalyptus does have a clean, almost clinical smell. It is classified as a top note when it comes to blending, meaning the scent is one of the more volatile ones. It can be blended with basil, benzoin, cedarwood, frankincense, juniper, lavender, lemon, marjoram, melissa, rosemary, and thyme. Roman chamomile. Roman chamomile is an extremely useful oil that is essential if you have a young child. The scent is quite sweet, but not at all overpowering, and it can be used from the age of 10 weeks on. It is when it comes to pain relief that this oil really shines. It is the best analgesic out of all the oils. Mixed with lavender oil to help cure a headache, add it to a cold compress and apply to the back of the neck. Mix into a carrier oil for a great treatment. If you have a bad toothache or when your little one is teething, chamomile will provide effective pain relief and will ease the throbbing ache. Ramp up its analgesic properties by creating a blend of lavender and chamomile and applying to the outside of the affected area. 
a couple drops of the same lend into the ear can help clear an ear infection. It is great for soothing stress and anxiety and can stop a temper tantrum in its tracks. In addition to its analgesic properties, it is also a very effective anti-inflammatory. As an antispasmodic, it can be used to ease an upset tummy or to soothe menstrual pains. It can also help to soothe allergic skin reactions and eczema. It helps to soothe dry, troubled skin, mixed with lavender and sandalwood for a wonderful treatment for skin that is suffering from exposure. It is classified as a middle note and will blend well with benzoin, bergamot, clary sage, geranium, jasmine, lavender, marjoram, melissa, patchouli, rose, and ylang-ylang. Sandalwood. Sandalwood oil is one of the more expensive oils, but a little really goes a long way. It is a superb fixative oil and blends well with many different oils. I have to admit, this is one of my favorite oils. I also find that I use it a lot. If the cost is too much for you, cedarwood oil has similar properties but is more affordable. Sandalwood is particularly important if you have mature dry skin. Mixed into a blend of neroli, palmarosa, and lavender, it is a potent anti-wrinkle treatment to use at night. It is a great sinus cleanser and will help alleviate dry coughs and the symptoms of colds and flu. Where it really shines, though, is in its ability to help you relax and relieve nervous tension, especially when these are the result of a fear of change. As a fixative, there is no oil to match it. I once made a batch of aqueous cream using sandalwood as the fixative and no preservatives. The bottle rolled under a bookcase, and I forgot about it. A couple of years later, we moved house, and the bottle was found. The blend still smelled as good as it had on the day it was blended. Neroli. I love the smell of neroli oil. It smells great and is a wonderful addition to any perfume blend. Just a note of caution here, though. When I was still working, a friend of mine and I decided we needed a bit of a pick-me-up. We took a piece of cotton and added a few drops of neroli. This we then put onto the radiator. The warmth from the radiator heated the oils, and the scent permeated the room, and very soon we were feeling great. We added a few more drops. After about an hour, though, we were feeling a little too high-spirited and found just about everything funny. We had developed a mild buzz just from the neroli oil. Granted, the room we were working in was pretty small, and we had the windows closed to keep warm. But this was one occasion when we had too much of a good thing. If you are using the oil in a diffuser, make sure to use it for about a maximum of a half an hour at a time. Alternatively, make sure the room is properly ventilated. In all fairness, this never happened again, and I use neroli oil quite often in my perfume blends. If you have a scar or stretch marks, this is a great oil to have on hand. Blended with lavender and geranium and rosehip oil, this is a wonderful treatment oil to encourage the reduction of scar tissue and to help regenerate skin. Combined with sandalwood, it makes a perfect treatment for dry or dehydrated skin. If you are battling with poor circulation, this is a good oil to use. It also has antispasmodic properties, so it can help relieve cramping. If you have chronic diarrhea or flatulence, rubbing a neroli blend into the abdomen can provide much-needed relief. It is particularly helpful in treating irritable bowel syndrome. It is a very uplifting oil and is effective in treating depression and nervous tension. Use a blend of neroli when you're feeling especially anxious and it will calm you down very quickly. Perhaps I'm just biased because I love the scent of neroli oil, but it's one of the best oils for perfume. It is a citrus oil, but does not smell overtly of citrus. To me, it is more floral and sweet. It provides a great top note for a perfume blend. It blends well with most other oils, but is especially good with benzoin, frankincense, geranium, lavender, and rose. Geranium. This is another of the oils that I always keep on hand. It is an inexpensive oil that is really great for the skin, and so I often use it in blends. It is often used in rose blends as it has very similar properties to rose oil and is said to smell like rose oil. 
Personally, to me, it smells very different from rose. It has a very herbaceous aroma. This does tend to overpower blends, so I use two drops of any other oils in the blend for every one drop of geranium. The oil is a powerful skin healer and regenerator. For a particularly effective eczema treatment, get yourself an organic aqueous cream, some geranium oil, some palmarosa oil, and sandalwood oil. Used twice daily, this will clear up eczema and other allergic skin reactions. There are no oils to beat geranium when it comes to skin treatments. It helps to balance troubled skin and hydrate dry skin. Use on sunburned skin to reduce the blistering and to soothe the burn. Apply to insect bites and allergic rashes for instant relief. It is a good anti-inflammatory and so will reduce the appearance of red raised pimples, prevent the infection of these, promote healing, and reduce the chances of scarring. I always mix up a bit of lavender and geranium oil whenever I am planning to do some crafting. It can be applied to cuts, my rotary cutter also hates me, and burns and will heal them faster. If you battle with water retention or cellulite, mix a few drops of oil into some olive oil and enough coarse salt to make a paste. Apply to the areas worst affected, and then rinse off in a warm shower or soak off in a warm bath. Your skin will feel smoother and softer and circulation will be boosted. Geranium oil is said to have a balancing effect on the hormonal system, and so it can be useful if you suffer from premenstrual syndrome or if you are menopausal. This is an uplifting oil that is used in the treatment of depression and nervous tension. It should not be used by pregnant women in their first trimester and should not be used by those diagnosed with breast or ovarian cancer. This is classified as a middle note and blends well with basil, bergamot, grapefruit, jasmine, lavender, neroli, orange, patchouli, pettigrain, rose, rosemary, sandalwood, and ylang-ylang. Ylang-ylang. If you want an oil that is truly exotic, this is it. You're either going to love it or hate it. There is no middle ground here. I love it, but I use it in limited quantities as it has quite a heady scent. If I feel a headache coming on, I avoid it as the strong scent can make a headache worse. It is useful in balancing the sebum levels in the skin, making it suitable for use by people with all types of skin. Used in the rinse water after shampooing your hair, it helps increase shine and healthy hair. It can be helpful at reducing high blood pressure and at regulating the heart. It helps to reduce nervous tension and is renowned as an aphrodisiac. It can help treat insomnia, but I find you need to be careful to use it in a blend here as the scent alone can end up being too strong. I once sprinkled a few drops on my pillow to help me sleep, only to find that I needed to swap out my pillow because of the scent. What I find more effective is to mix one drop of ylang, ylang one drop of vetiver, two drops of sandalwood, and put them in the diffuser half an hour or so before bedtime. This is a very relaxing blend. What I really love ylang, ylang for is its use as a perfume oil. It rounds off sharp notes and can really take your perfume blend up to the next level. It also acts as a fixative in perfumes. This is classified as a base note and blends well with grapefruit, bergamot, orange, jasmine, geranium, sandalwood, and vetiver. Sweet marjoram. This is not an oil that's commonly recommended in popular magazines, etc. And I think that's such a pity. Whilst this is not an oil that I would use in perfumery because it has a strong scent, I do find that its other qualities more than make up for this. I find that it's particularly useful for relieving tired and sore muscles and joints, especially if blended with a little lavender oil. It warms the muscles and is very soothing overall. If you battle with circulatory problems or high blood pressure, this is one oil that should be on your shopping list. It can help reduce bruising, regulate blood pressure, and also prevent chillblains. It has strong antibacterial and antiviral properties, making it useful in the treatment of colds and the flu. Mixed with chamomile and lavender oils, it makes a soothing rub for a tight chest and racking cough. It has antispasmodic properties and can be used in a warm compress. 
to help alleviate menstrual cramps and pain. It helps to regulate the menstrual cycle, particularly when blended with clary sage. For me personally, it is its calming effect that is most helpful. If I find that I'm feeling panicky or overanxious, sweet marjoram blended with either lime or chamomile always helps me put things back into perspective. Mixed with lavender and chamomile, this makes a really effective treatment for headaches and migraines. Massage into the temple or use as a cool compress over the forehead and at the back of the neck. Peppermint. I'm pretty sure you've heard about the digestion-soothing effects of peppermint tea. The essential oil is equally useful, but also has a few uses that you may not have heard about. Peppermint's regulating effects on the digestive system make it a truly useful herb, and one that does deserve a place on the top 10. It can help to ease dyspepsia, indigestion, colic, and flatulence. It also has strong antispasmodic properties, making it a valuable addition to a post-workout blend. In addition, it aids circulation, warms muscles, and soothes aches in muscles and joints. I do avoid using the oil on my face, though. I do only use it at a maximum of 1% dilution, as it may cause irritation to the skin. I find the oil is especially useful in the treatment of head colds. There is nothing better to clear up a nasty sinus infection than a blend of peppermint, eucalyptus, and lavender oils. I use this oil a lot when I need to focus. It's a very stimulating oil and clears out foggy thinking very fast. It should not be used nearer to bedtime as it can keep you awake. It can also interfere with the efficacy of homeopathic treatments and should never be used by pregnant women. Rosemary. Rosemary is another of those scents that you will either love or hate. It has quite a strong scent and can be overpowering in a blend. So again, use two drops of your other oils with every one drop of rosemary oil. This is one oil that is very good for oily skin and is useful in the treatment of acne. It is too harsh for dry or sensitive skin, though. It is a great oil to help stimulate hair growth. Rub a blend of rosemary and lavender into the scalp just about half an hour before washing your hair to help promote growth and a healthy scalp, preferably not within two to three hours of bedtime. It is a very effective stimulant for the circulatory system and warms muscles. It has analgesic properties and so is particularly good for those suffering from muscle stiffness and soreness, especially when this is due to overwork. It can also be valuable in relieving arthritic and rheumatic pain. Rosemary oil is a good tonic for the liver and gallbladder, so rub over the abdomen after overindulging. Rosemary oil is very effective at treating disorders of the respiratory system, such as sinitis and bronchitis. Blend it with eucalyptus to ease coughing and wheezing. Rosemary is also very useful in the treatment of headaches especially if these are brought on by stress and tension. Apply as a cool compress to the back of the neck. In ancient times, Roman soldiers would tuck a sprig of rosemary behind their ears to help them focus their attention. This tactic is just as effective when using rosemary oil. When I need to focus on writing or studying, I blend together rosemary oil and lime oil and massage it into my scalp. I find this helps me focus for longer periods of time and lets me work longer and harder, with less chance of fatigue setting in. Rosemary is classified as a middle note and blends well with basil, bergamot, frankincense, geranium, grapefruit, lavender, lemongrass, lime, mandarin, orange, pine, and pedigree. 